Good morning, friends. It's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Got my little buoy here. Say hi. Today is, no, sorry, not November, March 14th. It's a Sunday and I'm going to start seeds and plan the garden. So I wanted to bring you along with me as I, as I plan my garden and talk to you about the plans and, and what we're going to be doing outside this year. So, do you want to help me plan? Yeah? <laughs> on my garden plan and just thinking about all the different types of gardens we have and all the different beds that we have and what I'm going to put in them and I also got some soil blocks ready because I'm going to be planting peppers today so I have a bunch of different things going on so let's just talk about garden planning one thing I'm doing differently this year is actually having a plan and setting some goals and what one way I'm doing this is by writing everything down. I actually created a garden planner and journal so you can have space to put down your goals, draw out your garden plans, keep track of seed starting, like the crops you're growing, how many desired, um, the desired number of, of starts you want, germination rate, when you're gonna plant it in the ground, all of those good things. So I have a bunch of pages available. I'll link the garden journal in the description below. It's $5 on Etsy. Um, and I really think it's going to save you guys a lot of time if anybody's looking for a great space to plan out their garden of their dreams. So let's talk about my goals for the year. So on this sheet, I have it organized by goals for growing in the garden, preserving the garden and cooking with the garden. And a few of my goals this year for growing, I really want to have really full trellises. So my uh, arch trellises that we have, I'd love to have those full of melons and squash and, and beans. I want to manage some different pest issues. We have leek moth here, which is just an awful pest. Also vine borer cause us a lot of issues with our squash, any of the cucurbits. And I also want to manage the slug issue. So. We'll see how. I'm gonna try to come up with some, some strategies for the vine borer and the slug. I already have a plan to manage the leek moth. As far as um, other goals, I wanna have a cut flower garden, so we'll talk a little bit about that. I want it to be really low maintenance, so I'm using mulch and no dig and no till methods to decrease our weed issues, which we don't have very many weeds anyways. I wanna have a great sweet potato yield and success with squash because last year our squash really took a hit from the slugs. I, I wanna have space for a lot of different salad mixes. Going on to my goals with cooking, I wanna be able to have lots of fresh salads throughout the summer. Um, and one way I wanna do this is through meal prepping each week with like peppers and cucumbers and tomatoes and onions and all of those things. So I have just a lot of fresh salad mixes ready to go. Also pre-make dressings like cashew dressings and garlic dressings um, so I can just quickly pour it in a bowl, pour some dressing over it, add some garbanzo beans or other protein and be good to go. Um, I also want to have baby food for Kai. We want to do baby led weaning so that just means having your baby eat a lot of what you're eating um, 
like steamed veggies and things like that so they can explore food with their hands but I also do want to make some purees with a lot of the produce that we have so I'm planning to do actually a beet and carrot puree really soon here that I can freeze and then in a couple months when he's six months old we can start introducing that in small amounts and then as far as preserving the garden so things like hot sauces with the peppers making all of our own tomato products making vegetable broth um, I wanted to do jam this year with our blackberry crop. I want to do some pickled veggies and fermented veggies. I want to pre-make stir-fry mixes by chopping up vegetables and onions and freezing it in bags. And I also want to make some tea blends using like chamomile and lavender and pineapple sage and different things that we have growing in our herb gardens. And I also want to continue to make a lot of our own spices. We make all of our own pepper spices. We have like poblano powder, chili powder, cayenne, um, paprika, and it just adds so much flavor to dishes. So I want to continue doing that. Those are a lot of my goals for the year. So let's talk more specifically about plans. So I've drawn out all of the different garden beds that we have on this sheet right here. Wanna be free of this heart. I feel your arms around me. I need you more, need you here, more than I would like to admit. Let's forget about tomorrow. Yeah, should I hide away forever? Should I close my eyes and never again hold you tight, call you mine? So, as you can see on this sheet, there's a lot of different beds and you might be wondering what's going on there. If you're not familiar with our farm or our garden, let me just tell you about some of the different types of gardens that we have in our 6,000 square foot garden. Um, it's all no-till using a lot of different permaculture methods and we mostly don't have to weed the garden at all because we don't till anything up and we use a lot of mulch. So we have six different types of garden beds. The first one is the roost out method and that's using a heavy layer of rotted hay as mulch and just leaving it on the garden, letting it break down and make a lot of nutrient rich soil under, under the hay. We also introduced no dig into our garden last year in the fall and had a lot of success with that method. So that's adding a fresh layer of compost on top of the soil and no mulch, just compost. We have a back to Eden bed, and you may have heard me talk about this, but that's my least favorite method for growing annuals. It hasn't worked very well for us in our specific climate because our soil is so heavy, um, and it's just kind of creating a waterlogged soil underneath. But I am continu continuing to just let it be a back to Eden bed and just seeing what happens over time. This will be three years since we started that, that bed. We have a hookah culture mound, and I want to do more, more hookah culture in the future. Um, I really like that bed. It's so whimsical and wild, and I love just going and planting in there um, in the early spring. We have five mini berms and swales. So that's like the little mounds, and then there's the swales. There's a berm and a swale and a berm and a swale. We have five of those, and I have loved that. We introduced that last spring and it did an amazing job for things like sweet potatoes and onions and beans. Um, this year I'm going to continue to grow sweet potatoes and onions in those beds and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we have three raised beds. These are kind of random. They're over in front of the barn and they don't really um, have anything fun or unique about them other than they're just four by six beds and I use them to plant kind of randomly as I have leftovers. But this year I'm changing it up and I'm going to be doing a cut flower garden in those raised beds. And I hope to expand around, around those raised beds and expand our cut flower garden and eventually maybe fence it in um, and create like a nice little flower garden in that space. So why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind. I think about you a lot. It's almost like I can't stop. Can't stop. Yeah, yeah. You never lose an argument. So I've been trying hard to pretend that I'm okay. It's just a phase. And everything. 
One thing I really like to do with gardening is experimenting and trying new things. So this year I thought it would be fun to invite you guys to share your ideas and um, maybe help plan our garden. So I wanted to ask you what is one thing you'd like to see us do in our garden? Whether it's a method you've seen that you want us to try or it's a variety that you'd like us to grow, um, something fun, share your ideas in the comments below and I'll choose a couple of them to actually implement here at the farm. So I'm looking forward to hearing those. Let's talk specifically about this plan that I have here. So one thing that we have to work around is our garlic that we already have planted. We planted 500 cloves, so that's 500 heads of garlic, give or take, um, in our garden. And we have like four different sections of garlic. One thing we're going to have to do with all of our garlic is we're going to have to cover it with row cover. And that's because of our leek moth problem. So we have these four different sections of garlic that we're gonna have to cover with row cover. And I want to strategically plant other things around the garlic that also benefit from row cover. That's where I'm going to be planting some eggplant right near the garlic because eggplant has notorious issues with the flea beetles. And I like covering our eggplant anyways. So I'm gonna plant eggplant right around the garlic. I'm also going to plant some summer squash to prevent them from getting destroyed by vine borers. And I'm also planning to, to also grow some brassicas near the garlic. Another thing that I have to be strategic about is other succession crops, like peas, for example. Um, they really need to grow in some kind of structure. And so I'm going to create a pea teepee. And then as soon as the peas are starting to wind down, it will be the time for cucumbers. So I'll plant cucumbers where the peas are and it's going to become a cucumber and pea teepee. There's a couple things I don't know what I'm gonna do with, and I'd love to hear your ideas. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this first bed, which is our Back to Eden bed, and that's because it's notorious for producing like weak uh, and diseased plants, <laughs> and that's just because the soil is not healthy in that bed. So I don't wanna plant tomatoes or peppers in there because I really, really care about my tomatoes or peppers. I just really don't know what to put there. Maybe I plant sunflowers because I'm not as concerned about them growing perfectly. Um, maybe I just plant some a few things that'll like go wild just to help improve the soil structure. I don't know. I'd love to hear your ideas. And then another plan this year is to have flowers at the end of each bed, things like calendula and zinnias, things that will just kind of bush out and, and attract pollinators. So I do have six arch trellises, and on those arches, I'm going to be planting squash, melons, and pole beans. Those are kind of the three crops that I always like to plant on the arch trellises, except for last year, I didn't plant melons on them and instead planted melons over in the berms and swales, and that was a big mistake because when the melons aren't trellised, it's really easy to not see the fruit when it's ripe, and we had a lot of issues with bugs and other small animals eating the melons before we could get to them. So those are a lot of my plans this year. Um, I'm excited to hear your ideas for what you'd like me to implement here on the farm. And it's gonna be a lot of the same things that we've done in the past, although I am making some changes and I'm really looking forward to the cut flower garden that's going to be a first here. But for now, I need to start some peppers. So let's go ahead and get some peppers started in the soil box. visits from the little one. I am writing down all of the different pepper varieties that I'm starting and how many I want of each one so that I don't start too many. So I have just a ton of peppers so give me a minute to get this all organized and then I'll hop on back and talk to you guys about it. Do you 
recall when we were young Running from all things at once Without thinking twice And I knew it would catch up And that we would be the ones Left behind The stories I've been told so as you can see on this list, I have a lot of peppers. I have 24 varieties of peppers that I'm wanting to grow this year. Today I'm just going to start the hot peppers. That means I have about 10 varieties that I want to get started. So I have 44 blocks that I can plant in and 10 varieties. So I'm going to do four for each. So that's about 40. So that will add an extra four four of the varieties. So let me tell you which hot peppers I'm growing this year. A bunch of these are new. So Sugar Rush Peach, that's a new one. I'm growing a jalapeno variety from Fruition Seeds, also new. Um, hot pepper Fruition Seeds, which is Magnum Habanero. I'm growing cayenne pepper from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. And then I'm growing a couple varieties from high mowing, including the Ring of Fire cayenne and Hungarian hot wax pepper. And then from Baker Creek, I'm growing Tabasco peppers, um, paprika, which I've grown before. It's a hot paprika. Chinese five, I love growing this. It's, it's so fun to have in the garden. And then poblano. And that's it for my hot peppers. So let's, let's go ahead and get these labeled. California The sun is always shining right People are smiling, making plans Hiding behind their shades And you're doing the same No rain, no flowers Nothing's growing where you're at Heart is fire, but baby I bet you're cold without me even when it's 90 degrees Without me, I bet that you can get in the sleep in the bed. So I finished planting the peppers. There's one last step that's super important and that's to come over here and to plug in my heat mat. So now these guys are on top of the heat mat. So they should start to warm up pretty quick. And they're all labeled. They are all done. And soon they'll be sprouting and growing up like these guys, these pretty onions, and these guys. So I wrote down how many I wanted of each, and then once they germinate, I'll I'll write down the germination rate in this box here so I can see how many I ended up with. It's gonna be really full back there pretty soon. So right now I've got my slanted light over some artichokes, and then I've got the peppers, the hot peppers brassicas, onions, more brassicas, and then pumpkins from the harvest last year and some butternut squash down below. 